All right. In this Azure Lab demo, uh, Azure Lab demo number one, we're going to be going over some of the kind of foundational things that you would do inside of Microsoft Azure, uh, specifically creating virtual machines. Uh, we'll also look at uh, how to connect to that virtual machine once once it's been created, because uh, you're gonna, people don't need to access it to use use the uh, the virtual device, and how to uh, deploy a IIS web server onto the virtual machine. So if I'm creating this virtual server, I want it to have a role. So the role that we're gonna uh, put in place uh, in this case is gonna be a web server role. All right. So to, to get started, first thing you're gonna do is you're going to log into your azure portal uh the way i like to do it is i'll just go to portal.azure.com um and then it'll even take me to a sign in page or if i'm already logged in with a um a microsoft 365 account it will actually take me directly to this this page um here you'll be able to see things like your a shortcuts to your subscriptions and some other uh, common resources and tools that you'll typically use in the Azure environment. If you want to see a, a more extensive listing of, of those, go to the little hamburger stack over here in the upper left corner, click that, and then you can see a more extensive list. For our purposes, though, we're going to go to virtual machines and select that. Once you get the virtual machines, um, if, if it's a brand new um, environment, a newly created account like the one I'm working with here, you'll see there's no virtual machines displayed because they haven't built any yet. Uh, but as, as you start to utilize this environment, you'll of course see all of your virtual machines listed here. So it's a good way to inventory the VMs that you have, um, that you've created for yourself. If you want to make a new virtual machine, we'll go up to the top where all our, all our tools are, and we'll click that Create button. We're going to um, select, in this case, a Create Azure Virtual Machine. Um, there's also some other options. You can do an Azure Virtual Machine with preset configurations. So if, if you want to deploy a machine that's already been configured in advance, you can do that. Or there's some if you want to do some additional virtual machine options, more advanced stuff, there's an option there. We're going to go with the basic create uh, Azure virtual machine. Uh, so we're going to click that first option. Once we get there, first thing is we're going to check is to see if we have a subscription. Um, if you don't have a proper Microsoft subscription, you you could go through the motions of creating a virtual machine. But when you go to hit that review and create button, it'll say you you don't have permission or you don't have the resources to do it. Um, so uh, make sure you have a valid subscription in place. Um, and then if you don't have an existing resource group, which if you don't have any VMs, you probably don't, you'll need to create a resource group. Um, the resource group is basically going to act like a container to hold all the other uh, cloud resources that this virtual machine needs to needs in order to fully run. Is going to hold all those other settings. So, net, so like IP addresses and networking, and um, you know, if I got if I had additional virtual storage, all those other resources will be grouped together because it makes it easier to manage them that way. So, I'm going to create a, a resource group. In this case, I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call it uh, my VM, VM1 test. I'm just going to call it that. My create. So now I can see my VM1 test resource group is there. Next thing I have to do is I have to give my virtual machine a name. I'm going to name it uh, using my first initial and last name. And then I'm going to call it SVR1. I'm going to leave my region as US. So this is talking about where I want to deploy um, the uh, virtual machine. So like which which region in this cloud providers like global span and network do i want to deploy it's usually a best practice to deploy 
in a region that's close to the users who are going to be accessing it. So this is some on the East Coast of the U.S. Um, U.S. East is what it's defaulting to. I can choose an availability zone within there. If I got to set, uh, you know, a specific one, I'm just going to go with the default availability zone of uh, availability zone one. I'm going to keep my default here of trusted launch, uh, trusted launch virtual machine. That's my security type. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to change the image. So right now it's default into me and um, deploying an Ubuntu server. I want to deploy a Windows server. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to deploy this Windows server 2019 data center edition. And I'm going to leave it 64 bit. I'm going to uh, keep my default size here. You can see it's even giving me an estimate on how much that's going to cost per month. If I wanted to resize it to maybe um, play around with the cost a little bit, there's some options to do that there. Oh. Let's start that over. All right, now I'm going to create an admin account on here. Uh, my administrator account, give it a name. And give it a password. Sure my password is matched. How about that? Leave it. I'm going to leave it set to, um, allow selected ports but i'm also going to enable port 443 and 80 and ssh so those are all the ports that i'm going to need uh be allowed to connect to this virtual machine otherwise i won't be able to remote into it All right, now it looks like that's good for the basic settings. I'm gonna go ahead and say review and create. Didn't like something about my networking. And it's just giving me a warning here saying that both of these are open up to the internet. I'll only do that for testing, which I want, that's what I want to do it for. So I'm going to leave that 
and I'm fine. Go ahead and create my virtual machine because since it's passed the validation test. And then give it a minute to create that VM in my resource group. And once that finishes, we'll be back. All right, that took a couple of minutes to finish baking, but now my, um, you see from my deployment details that it's created all my resources in my resource group and my virtual machine uh, should be deployed. So I'm gonna go back to my, if I click on my resources, I can see there's my W Sanders SVR1 virtual machine ready to go. If I wanted to go verify that from the virtual machines tool here, I can also see there it is in the list. I'm gonna go into it now. And in this next step, we're gonna actually try to, to connect to it. So you see right there, right at the top of the option is a button that says connect. There's also a start, restart, stop. So this is controlling the virtual machines um, uh, state, but it's already powered on. Start is, start is grayed out because it's the virtual machine is turned on already. So I want to connect to it. So I'm going to hit this connect button and then I get two options. I can choose to connect uh, using one of the standard ways, uh, which are the ones I activated, which were RDP, remote desktop protocol, HTTPS and SSH, or I can create something called a bastion host, or sometimes we call it a jump box. That That's a device that allows you to uh, it creates another computer on that virtual network. And instead of connecting directly to the server, you connect to this bastion host. And from the bastion host, the bastion connects to the server. So it's like a, a another way of jumping into the, the remote device. I'm gonna do the, uh, the regular uh, connection uh, from local machine. I'm gonna download this RDP file right here. But you can see there's four other four other ways that you can connect as well. All right. But let's go with RDP. Download that file. Grab the download. Get a little pop-up window here. I'm gonna say connect. Now I see the I see the IP address. Is that this is the public IP address of that virtual machine? That's the username on the virtual machine, and then it wants to know the password I created. And I put that in, that was correct. That's why I'm getting this remote connection uh, box here, asking my certificates. Sand doesn't have it, but that's okay. I know why it doesn't, I just created it. I'm going to tell it, go ahead, connect anyway. Starting to get my connection options. And then boom, here I am. I'm, I'm connecting into my VM now. And it is in the process of logging me into my server. So now I am in my W Sanders SVR1 server being hosted in the cloud. Last thing I'm gonna do once the server finishes fully loading, uh, which it looks like it is done loading up already is I'm going to now use the server to, uh, I'm gonna, on the server, deploy IIS, which is Microsoft's web server um, role. So first thing I have to do here, once it's finished, oh, it's actually still loading, it's loading server manager. So let that do its thing.
So while that's still doing that, I should still be able to search for PowerShell. If you're not familiar, PowerShell is Microsoft's go to systems administration scripting language. So I'm going to go to PowerShell, launch my PowerShell window here. And then I'm going to uh, run a line of code that's going to allow me to install the IIS web server row. And that code is going to be, I'm going to use, let me show in my VM. The command lit install windows feature. Okay, give it the name of the feature. The name is web dash server and besides just a web server i also wanted it to include the management tools all right let's run that Assuming I didn't fat finger anything, uh, which I may have. Make sure I type that in correctly. Tools, forgot to eat. There we go. Yeah, so take a, a minute to do the is basically downloading uh, some additional features that are part of the operating system, but they just haven't been enabled. So it's, it's enabling that IIS feature in the Windows server so that it can take on the role of a web server. So we'll let that run and then we'll come back when it's. All right, so that finished installing and now I can see that um, I got I have a um, some output from that command and right here the exit code is success and it was success true, right? So everything that it needed to do, got all those features it was successful. So now we're going to go back to our, um, uh, we're going to leave out of our VM. We're going to just kind of minimize that for a second. Go back to the virtual machine. And then we're going to be looking for underneath of this overview blade, we're going to be looking for the IP address of our virtual machine, the public IP address, which is right here. I'm gonna take that IP address and you see I get the little two sheets of paper there. That's my easy copy to clipboard number. I'm gonna, gonna click on that to copy. And then I'm gonna go over to a web browser. Any web browser will do. Launch a new tab. And I'm gonna put that IP address into my browser and tell it to go. Let me actually add a S on the end of there.
All right, so minor hiccup. Um, what I had to do to correct it, so what was happening is my IS page wasn't displaying, but uh, what I had to do to correct that was to allow HTTP to uh, be one of the ports I could connect on early on. I had unchecked HTTP and allowed HTTPS, but there's no security certificate, so that won't work. I had to switch it back over to regular HTTP. Now, when I copy this IP address from the clipboard and then bring it over to a uh, browser tab like so, paste it in there and run it, I get my default Internet Information System or IIS landing page, which is the the uh, the basic kind of default placeholder page until you build out your website that you want to go on that IIS server. All right, so that concludes Lab One. Watch this thoroughly, and then um, for my folks who are doing this as a graded lab, you're going to answer a few. Um, follow-up questions based on the things I discussed in the video. All right, see you in the next one.